Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video you will learn what is Babel.js and why do you need to transpile your JavaScript code. So let's jump right into it. So actually JavaScript is really problematic language. For example, if we will take any other language, for example, let's say Ruby, you just have new versions there, you install new version of Ruby and you are getting new features. But in JavaScript world it's completely different. We have different browsers and actually they implement the same JavaScript features in different time. Which means JavaScript works differently in different browsers. For example, JavaScript can have one feature in one browser, but this feature is not yet available in another browser, because you can't really use some feature and be sure that it will work in all browsers at once. For example, let's have a look on a sync await feature. If you don't know what is a sync await, I actually made the whole video regarding asynchronous operations inside JavaScript. So if you are interested, I will link it here on the top also. So actually here I am in the website canonuse.com and this is an awesome website to check in what browser specific feature of JavaScript is working. And here I wrote a sync and we are finding here the part asynchronous functions. This is exactly what we are interested in. And as you can see this is how a sync await is working in different browsers. So here we have a list of browsers and here you can see that in current versions actually this feature is working fine. This is why here everywhere it is green. So if you are using Edge, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera of modern versions then it will just simply work there natively. But for example, if your project must support, let's say, EA11, then you have a problem because it's not supported, which means you can't really use this new feature in all the browser. What is the solution here? Actually, for the old browser, we need to have some fallback. So we need to check, okay, if we have Internet Explorer 11 or maybe lower, then we need to have some polyfill. So what is the polyfill? This is the implementation of a sync await function, but just with plain ES5, for example. And actually this is completely absurd because we have too many new features and we don't really know what features we can use, what features we can't use and obviously we can't try these polyfills for the older versions of browsers. Which means we need a solution. The most popular solution for this problem is called Babel.js. So what is this? This is the transpiler for JavaScript code. And here is the official website and they have a nice GIF animation here. As you can see this is what we are writing on the left and this is our current code. And then on the right is the code that was transpiled by Babel. And this code on the right will be supported in all browsers that you will choose. So actually Babel checks what code we wrote, what browsers do we want to support, what features are working in what browsers and what code needs to be transpiled. And also it includes lots of polyfills for all the version of functions. Now let's try to use Babel on the example. This is why here I have my project. As you can see I have two files. First of all index.html, this is simply index page with script main.js. And here is my main.js, it is completely empty. Now let's write some function by using a sync await, so we can check how Babel will transpile this function. This is why here let's say that we have a function get item, and this is an asynchronous function. This is why I am using here reserved word async. Now inside we can return a wait, and we can use a wait here and wait for our result just because we made this function asynchronous. Now here we can use fetch and provide some URL inside, for example http google.com. This means that we want to fetch this page and then we want to wait for this result. And actually a sync await is newer feature, it is coming from ECMAScript 7, which means it won't work in all the versions of browsers. Now to use Babel and transpile our code, we must install several packages. And first of all for this I want to generate a package JSON file, so we can store our dependencies there. This is why I am simply writing npm init and it will generate for me package JSON. So here I am clicking just enter and at the end we will get our package JSON. So as you can see here now we have a nice package JSON which is completely empty. 
Now we need to install three packages to work with Babel. So here I am writing npm install and the first package is babel slash core. And don't forget the add symbol before. So actually this package contains functionality of Babel itself. The next package that we need to install is babel slash and here will be CLI. And this is the command line tool to use Babel and transpile our files from command line. This is exactly what we need. And the last package that we need here is Babel Preset. This is why here we are writing Babel slash Preset environment. And this package will help us to configure what browsers we want to support by using Babel. Now let's jump to package.json and check how it's looking like. As you can see here in our dependencies, now we have three dependencies. So we installed Babel, CLI, Core and Presetenv of version 7. But actually as you can see we installed our Babel CLI package locally and not globally. Which means in order to use it, we must write all our commands by using this CLI from node modules. So actually our commands will look like this. So we have node modules, then add Babel, CLI, bin and Babel.js script. And here we can say for example minus minus version and as you can see this is our Babel core of this version. But before we will use this command we must create a config file for Babel. This is why let's jump inside our project and here I want to create new file dot babelrc. And inside we must provide a JSON with several options. And here we need presets. And here as a value we have an array. And now inside our array we have a single property. And here we will have Babel slash present env. So actually present env is this additional package that we installed for Babel. And now our config is fully ready. So the only thing that we set here is that we want to use this library. Now we are fully ready to transpile our main.js. In our case we need to write here first of all the path to babel.js, then the name of our file, this is main.js, and then the option of our output. So we want to transpile our main.js file in another name. This is why here we are saying out file and here let's name it main.dist.js. And we are hitting here enter and we don't have any output. Which probably means that everything is fine and let's check our outputted file. So when I am jumping here inside editor, we have now two files. First of all our main.js, this is just our code. And now we are open main this.js and as you can see this is the transpiled file. And you can see a lot of code here, so actually this is the ECMAScript 5. So all newer stuff, for example like let's or const, maybe a sync await or error functions, this is all will be transpiled by default in ECMAScript 5. But this is not the best solution. Why? Because we are not thinking what browsers do we support at all and normally we are saying that ECMAScript 5 will probably work in all browsers. But actually it is not in older versions, it still won't work. But it's not the problem. The problem is here that we are transpiling all our code even if we don't need to. For example in our case we have a sync await. And here we already saw in can I use website that it is working in a lot of browsers. Which means for a lot of browsers and maybe we are supporting only modern browsers, we don't need to transpile it. This actually means that instead of having such code and loading such amount of code to browser, we have this amount of code. So first of all we have more JavaScript, our browser must parse more and it is not efficient. This is why we have present env. There we can control what browsers do we want to support. Let's check this out. We can jump back inside of a dot babelrc and here we can provide more configuration. So here we must provide our configuration a little bit differently. So we have presets and this is always an array. But now we need to wrap our Babel preset also with array. So actually this Babel preset will be the first argument of our array. And now we want the second argument and it will be an object. And inside we have a property which is called targets and here we can say what browsers do we want to support. 
and there are lots of options for targets, you can check them inside Babel documentation. I am using here the one that works really nice for almost all projects. So here target is an object, and then inside we can provide what browsers we want to support. For example, I can say here EE, and here we have 11. And this means that we are starting our support with Internet Explorer 11, and not earlier. Now let's try to transpile our code again. So I am running here node modules Babel and we are transpiling our file. Now I am opening main disk.js and as you can see it looks exactly like before, because we said that we want to transpile our file for EE11. And when we are checking inside the website can I use, you can see that it is not supported in EE11. So here it is red, this is why we must transpile it and create polyfill. But what will happen if here inside of year we will write that we are supporting only Edge, maybe of version 17, which is newer, and we know that inside Edge, for example here, you can see it is green, which means this version already supports async await. In this case, if we will run our Babel command again and open our main disk.js, as you can see our code is looking exactly like our source code. You can compare here, we have our function, and here is the same but you strict on the top. So actually this changes everything. You can really say what browsers do you need to support, and then you are good to go. This is why the correct way to use Babel is always know what versions of browsers do you support for your project or inside in company. For example, normally I would write in Babel RC something like this. For example, we are supporting the version Edge starting from 17, then we are supporting here Firefox, maybe from version 60, then we have Chrome from version 67, and then we are supporting Safari starting from 11.1. Actually, this is enough configuration for Babel to understand what features it needs to transpile and what not. And our generated file will be much smaller than before. One more important point to mention is how well Babel works with TypeScript and React. And actually here in the official documentation on the left, you can see that we have presets, for example for React and for TypeScript. So actually when we will open it, we simply install the preset for React, then we need to save it inside our config file, and then we are good to go. Out of the box, Babel can transpile your GS6 code in plain JavaScript. And the last thing that I want to mention is that even if you don't see Babel inside your project, it doesn't mean that you are not using it. For example, if you are writing code using React, and you are using Create React App, there inside you have Babel under the hood. Of course you are not working with it directly, like we just worked, but still you have it, and still your code is transpiled for different versions of browsers. So actually, as you can see, JavaScript can't live without Babel, or at least some tool to transpile the code, because we have newer features almost every day, but we must support all the browsers. For example, I know a lot of companies where they are still using EE8 which means they can't really update their software, and we need to be aware of this and transpile with Babel our project just to the older EA version. Also, if you want to improve your programming skills, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And if you are interested, I will link them down in the description box below, so don't forget to check them out. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding!